everyone. Welcome to Ignite, where we connect, grow, and inspire. I hope you're prepared for today's sermon. Let's get started. to know everybody. I hope you are all doing well and keeping safe. It is a pleasure to have this opportunity to minister to you at the comfort of your home. And I do pray that God Almighty will richly touch and bless you in Jesus' name. I want to say a big thank you to our pastor, Pastor Ayo, and my dear sister, Duni, for giving me this opportunity to be part of the service today. God bless you, Pastor. Uh, I would like us to have a quick uh, word of prayer. Our Father, I thank you, Lord God Almighty, for another opportunity that we have to fellowship together. Despite the global pandemic, we are still able to meet. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory and honor. Lord, I'm thankful for you for all the opportunity that we have in these past months to go through this wonderful series called Spiritual Discipline. Oh Lord God Almighty, I ask that the Holy Spirit will open our hearts to receive the word of life in Jesus' name. Teach us how to turn to you so that your thoughts will be our thoughts and your way will be our ways in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Once again, you are welcome. Now, I would like to quickly go through some of the topics that uh, have been, we have been discussing the past five weeks. And I know there are so many areas that we've looked at. Some of the areas that we look at in the past five weeks were discipline of obedience, discipline of meditation, discipline of, of the word, Discipline of prayer, discipline of fasting. Now, with these five 
area that has been looked at in the past five weeks, one of the things that I noticed that is very common is the word discipline. Discipline of obedience, discipline of meditations, discipline of the word, discipline of prayer, discipline of fasting. Now, the common denominator or factor in this five series that has been taught is the word discipline. And I begin to ask myself that in life, any area of your life that you don't have discipline, you can never have control or success in it. So today, I'm going to add to the five topics that we have looked at, and I'll be looking at discipline of fellowship. Discipline of fellowship, I'll be looking at that today, and I pray that God Almighty will give us a better understanding on how we as his children should be able to maintain that discipline in Jesus' name. Now, before I go into discipline of fellowship, uh, talking about fellowship, there was a story of a lady that uh, went to meet her pastor and said, Pastor, my cat just died and I would like you to please help me to uh, do the funeral service for my cat. And the pastor, being an Assembly of God pastor, said, Ma'am, I'm sorry. We don't do funeral for cats in our church. I know you are a member of this church. Unfortunately, we cannot do funeral service for your cat. And then a thought crossed the pastor's mind and said, with a very weird smile in his face, he said, Mark, uh, if you don't mind, there's a pastor across the road, a Baptist pastor, that is, will be willing to do the funeral service for your cat. So if you can just walk across, I'm sure you will be delighted to have the funeral service for your cat. And uh, the woman said, thank you, Pastor. I really appreciate it. But uh, can I ask a question? Do you think that $1,500 will be enough for me to have a funeral service for my cat? And when the pastor heard that, he was very, very excited. You mean you are going to spend $1,500 to do a funeral service for your cat? Oh, you should have told me that earlier. Please bring your cat to my church. I'm going to do it. <laughs> no, that's just uh, uh, a little uh, way to get us uh, excited. Amen? So let's go back to what we are going to be looking at today, discipline of fellowship. And I'm going to start, first of all, to try to explain the meaning of discipline. We're going to look at the word definition of discipline. We're going to look at the biblical definition of discipline before we go into the main topic for today, which is discipline of fellowship. So what is discipline? In a general term, discipline means any training that is intended to develop moral character or produce a pattern of behavior. It is the practice of training, the practice of training people to obey rules or a code of conduct using punishment to correct disobedience. So what that means to me is that discipline is very essential in our everyday life. When there is no discipline, people can do whatever they like because there is no consequence. In fact, in the book of Proverbs 22, verse 6, when the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he grow up, he will not depart from it. What God is saying to us is that if we train our child at an early age, they will be conformed to a standard or a pattern of living, meaning that when they grow up, they will not misbehave. They will not be a victim of any police abuse. They will not be victim of anybody abusing or talking to them that they are not well brought up. So discipline is very essential, very, very essential. There's nothing anybody can do successfully when he or she is not disciplined. Let's take an example. If you are driving and you see a red, car, a red uh, light on a traffic light and you just run through, of course, you have violated the, you have violated the, the rule, the, the, the rule of law. And again, if you do that, you're going to either kill people or you kill yourself. So one of the factors that go with discipline is obeying the rule. Because if you do not obey it, there are a lot of consequences that goes with it. So with that being said, I would like to just go to 
look at some of the definition of the word fellowship because we are looking at discipline of fellowship. And like I said earlier, in the past five weeks, we've looked at different aspects of discipline. So today we are looking at discipline of fellowship. Discipline of fellowship. Now, what is the meaning of fellowship? The word in the dictionary states that, the fel that fellowship is the act of people sharing activities, goal, interests, duties, trial, trouble with one another in a group. That is the word definition of fellowship. But Christian fellowship is similar to that also. It is an act of meeting with those who are converted, who possesses the same general belief. It is the sharing of knowledge and trial and trial and sources of life among those who are called and chosen of God. Such regular fellowship meetings are essential elements in a believer's spiritual growth and development. And as a matter of fact, God strongly encourages believers to have fellowship together. God strongly encourages believers to, uh, to have fellowship together. So I will first of all look at one of the scriptures in the Bible in Hebrews 10 verse 25. Uh, the Bible says, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good work, not neglecting to meet together as the habit of some but encouraging one another. So what God is basically saying is that we need to get into that habit of coming together as a member of the body of Christ. We need to have that habit. There were some, in, the, in those days, a lot of Christians were not meeting together. And so God was trying to correct that uh, pattern of behavior that we need to get into the habit of coming together, fellowship together, in a very small group, that is one of the things that God encourages us to do as believers in the book of Hebrews 10, chapter 24, and verse 24 to 25. The book of Acts 42 to 47 says that they devoted themselves to the apostle teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and sign performed by the apostle. All the believers were together and they had everything in common. They sold property and possession to give to one who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple court. They broke bread in their homes. They broke bread in their homes. and ate together with gladness and sincerity of hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Now, from this scripture that we have just read, there's a lot of benefit that we can see from this scripture. But most importantly, what strikes out there is the way the believers were able to come together. You know, they come together and every bring, everybody bring whatever they have, and they combine it together, share it among the brethren, so that there won't be anyone among the brethren that will be lacking. Amen? So, it is very important for us to know that coming together as believers in a very small group, or a small connect group, or a house fellowship group, is essential for our spiritual development. And as we go on in this uh, message today, we're going to see some of the benefits for those that partake in that fellowship that we're talking about. And of course, we're also going to look at why some people still don't find it necessary. We're going to look at that. But in the book of Acts that we've just read, in verse 42 to 47, we can see the benefit of believers. When they come together, there was no lack because everybody was able to bring one or everything they have. They combine it together, they will sell it and they distribute it among all the believers so that there won't be anything lacking among the believers. So it is very important for us as Christians to bear that in mind that when we come together in that kind of setting, you can be sure that your need will be met. Amen. So, one other aspect that I would like us to look at is how do we maintain fellowship? We've talked about 
believers coming together, sharing their need, their burden, their sorrow, their disappointment together, and encouraging each other. Now, we're going to see, or we want to look at what, how do you maintain fellowship? How do you maintain fellowship? It is just like a normal way of life. If you buy a car, for example, now, any kind of car, either new or maybe fairly used, there's always a manufacturer manual that comes with the car. And they will tell you that after 10,000, after 5,000, after 20,000 or 70,000, you need to do specific changes to maintain the performance of your car. Maybe oil change or spark plug or whatever, just to make sure that your, your car will still maintain that good performance so that it can run better. Now, if you decide not to do any of those maintenance, guess what, what happened? After a few months or years, your car will start giving you signal that, well, I'm tired. I can't perform the way I'm designed to perform because you have not been maintaining me. So I'm just using that as an example to know that in Christendom, in the, in, in, in the church or in the fellowship, we need to maintain the fellowship that we are talking about. So we're going to be looking at how do you maintain fellowship? Now, you can't maintain fellowship if you are not disciplined. Like I said at the beginning, it involves discipline. Discipline entails obeying rules, code of behavior, and correcting disobedience. Now, if you cannot maintain discipline, you cannot, you cannot maintain fellowship. You cannot belong in a fellowship. In every fellowship, there's always rule, rule, rule of law, or code of law. Maybe, well, I won't say rule of law, but setting guidelines that the people in that group must have put aside or established that for you to be able to be part of this fellowship, for you to be able to be part of this connect group, you have to follow this principle so that there won't be any hindrances along the line. So if you are not, if you are the type that does not obey discipline, that does not or is not ready or willing to obey discipline, you cannot maintain fellowship. So being disciplined is very essential for you to be part of any fellowship or any gathering. So, like I said earlier, discipline actually enables us to become somebody that is teachable, to become a good follower, a good follower of Christ. When you are disciplined, the people will see different kind of lifestyle in you. You don't talk anyhow. You don't abuse people. You have a God-like kind of lifestyle. That is what Christ meant when he said, you are the light. You are the light. And as the light, everywhere you go, you are supposed to make that environment brighter. People should see Christ in you. So if you want to really maintain discipline, you must be ready to obey the rules. You must be able to follow the guidelines that have been set aside. And those are the things that will make you to grow in your knowledge and the understanding of the Word of God. Now, there are other more examples that I would like us to quickly look at. The benefits of fellowship. Before we look at why some people are still not ready to even embrace it. Now, some of the benefits of fellowship is that Fellowship actually gives us a good picture of who God is. If you look at Romans chapter 12, verse 4 to 6, okay, it says that just as our bodies have many parts and each part have a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. In His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, prophesy, speak out much faith as God has given to you. What the Bible is basically telling us is that each and every one of us, God has given us a unique ability. Some of you are very good in singing. Some of you are very good in teaching. Some of you are very good in encouragement. Some of you are very good in giving. Now, just like we said, the body of Christ has many, has many parts. And each of these parts are supposed to be complementary to each other. So when you bring your gift, this person brings his gift, that sister brings her gift, 
you combine it together, you are able to develop everyone together and we all grow together. And that is the picture that God expects us. So primarily, one of the advantages or benefit of fellowship is it gives us a good picture of who God is. Number two, fellowship also makes us stronger. In Matthew 18, verse 19 to 20, the Bible makes us to understand that truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together, there I am in their midst. In the book of Deuteronomy 32, verse 30, we are the Bible says, How could one person, I mean, one person can change a thousand and two, ten of thousand? Now you can see the unity that is uh, being mentioned here. When we gather together, we are more stronger, we are more united, we are able to achieve better than you acting alone. You know, it says if two people can agree together, the prayer of agreement, that's between two or more people. When you agree on certain, area, certain issue in life, God is telling us that he's going to answer it. And that makes you better, that makes you stronger. Amen. And when one person is chasing 1,000 1, and two, 20,000, 10, 10, that is a big gain. I don't know what percentage of gain is that, but you can be sure that doing two together with other people in one accord, make you stronger, make you better. Then number three, fellowship also provides encouragement. Fellowship provides encouragement. In the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 15 to 8, I read, Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you as honorable. <coughs> Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Now, this is a very wonderful scripture. The Bible says you, you should be happy with those that are happy. Weep with those who are weeping. Now, if something... God forbid something bad happened to you and you are by yourself. You don't have anybody to encourage you. Guess what? Within a very short time, there is going to be depression. It will lead to depression because you are just a low ranger. God does not encourage you to, anybody to be a low ranger. He wants you to be in company of people of like mind. <coughs> Amen. So, fellowship actually provides encouragement. It encourages us because when you gather together, you have people of like mind that are able to, you know, be of benefit to you. They are able to support you in area that you are weak. They are able to teach you in area that you don't know. Amen. Then number four of one of the advantages of benefit is fellowship also reminds us that we are not alone. We are not alone. When you go to to your small group, to your connect group, or to your house fellowship. You see other brethren of like mind. And that actually encourages you. In times like this uh, coronavirus and, or any, any of these uh, uh, crises that we have in the world, you know, ability to be able to talk to people in your connect group is a good factor that anybody should not take for granted. If you don't have anybody to call, you are just alone. And before you know it, you start thinking of, you know, the depression we're setting, and uh, if care is not taken, our blood pressure and all kind of diseases will come in. So you can't be alone. God is reminding us that when you belong to a fellowship, you can be sure that you will have the support of your, of your members. And number five, fellowship also helps us to grow. <coughs> fellowship helps us to grow. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26, this is Brother Paul writing to the Corinthians. He says, Where well, my brother and sister, when you meet together, one will sing, another will teach, another will tell special revelation God has given him or her, and one will speak in tongue, and one will interpret what is said. But everything is done, everything that is done must be done in order. So coming together is a great way for each of us to grow in our faith. No matter where you have been in your faith, fellowship 
together provides us good and better strength. Being around other believers gives us the chance to learn and to grow in our faith. And number six, fellowship also binds us together strongly. In Proverbs 27 verse 17, the Bible makes us to understand that iron sharpened iron as a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. Now, when you are in a small group setting or a connect group setting, there's a lot of things that you don't know. And there are other members in your group that knows a lot more than you. So being able to be in the midst of other people will enable you to learn new things, to discover new things. And that's what the Bible is telling us here in Proverbs, that it makes you to become stronger when you are in the midst of your brethren. So I want to encourage every one of us that is listening to us today that you should try your best to belong to a group. As much as possible, don't be a low ranger. Don't be a low ranger. You cannot achieve a lot by yourself. When you come together in unity, in one accord, with your friend, with your body in Christ, with your fellowship member, you are able to achieve a lot. Amen. Now, let us look at um, despite all this gain that we talk about or um, benefit of fellowship, there are still a lot of people that find it difficult to belong. What are the reasons why people don't want to go to fellowship or they don't want to belong? We're going to look at them very quickly and I have about five points that I would like to share with us. And one of them is lack of commitment. Now, if you are not committed to anything, you can really not achieve much. So be, to be able to be disciplined in fellowship, you must be intentional about it. You have to be committed. You must decide within yourself that I want to really be part of this group. And it is only when you have that intentionality in your heart that you can really see the benefit. Amen? So lack of commitment is one of the reasons why many people do not want to be committed. I mean, do not want to belong to a fellowship like your connect group or a house fellowship or small group. You have to be committed because there's a lot, there's a lot that is required when you are in that kind of uh, group. Now, number two reason why people do not want to belong or find it difficult to belong is that some people don't, don't, they don't just want to be corrected. Many people do not want to be corrected. They, they feel they know everything. They know it all. They know it all. They cannot be corrected. I know the Bible says it's only a fool that does not want to be corrected. But if you are someone that is teachable, if you are someone that can be corrected, you will not find it difficult to be in a, uh, uh, find it too difficult to maintain fellowship. So people that find it difficult to maintain fellowship is perhaps most likely because they do not want to be corrected. And number three, some people also find it difficult to belong to a fellowship or to maintain discipline of fellowship because they are afraid. A lot of people have double standard way of living. In the church, they are somebody that they are just like an angel. Outside the church, they are something else. So when you have double standard way of living, you don't want you will not you find it difficult to belong because very soon people will eventually discover who you are. You can't hide for too long in life, especially when it comes to the things of God. Is it that you are for Him or you are not for Him? Yeah, once in a while we do make mistakes here and there, but many people that do not want to belong to a fellowship or that cannot maintain discipline of a fellowship is primarily because they have another way of life. They have double standard way of life. They, 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 they do something that are not normal when people are not seeing them. And that is why they find it difficult to belong. Then number four reason that I believe people that do not want to belong have in common is trust. Now, if you want to belong to a fellowship, you, you must have, there must be trust in any fellowship or any relationship. When there is no trust, people will not be comfortable to commit themselves to that kind of gathering. Simply, what that means is that if I'm in a fellowship and I have an issue, 
I should be able to trust my members that whatever I'm going through, whatever my situation is, whether good or bad, they are able to keep it within the group. They will not turn into a public news where everywhere everybody will know that brother A or brother or sister A is going through these kind of issues. So when there's no trust, people will find it difficult, very, very difficult to belong to that kind of group. So it is very important for anyone that wants to maintain the discipline of fellowship first to be obedient, to be ready to learn and teachable because you don't know everything. There are a lot of things that you don't know that other people know. So if you have that kind of mindset, you can be sure that you are, on your, you are, you are in the right path and you will benefit you know, to be in that kind of uh, group setting. Amen. So with that being said, I would likely to, I would like us to just look at uh, one of the duty that God actually expects us to have if we are going to maintain discipline of fellowship. We've talked about some of the benefits of fellowship, that it's how give us the opportunity to care for one another. It's also help us to serve one another in love. And it also help us to pray for one another. When you are weak or down, you need to talk to your small group. You need to talk to your connect group and bring out your need and they will pray in agreement and God will answer your prayer or your need. And it also helps us to restore one another. If anyone is going through a challenge or is weak in a particular area, in a small setting, God has made other people available who know more than you to help you, to lift you up and encourage you to grow to a new level. And of course, finally, some of the benefits is that it also helps us to be hospitable to one another. When you are in a small setting of that nature, Whatever you don't need, there are people in that group that might have it. All you need to do is to be open to them because you are now in one family. You are now a member of the same family of God living in one accord and you can be sure that your name will be met. And I do pray that God Almighty will give us that kind of mindset to know that it is beneficial for us to maintain spiritual fellowship and to be part, I mean, and discipline. Amen. God bless you, and uh, I do believe that uh, what we have discussed today will really be a blessing to you. Um, but all that we've talked today in a nutshell is that for you to really benefit in this fellowship that we talk about, you have to first of all be born again. You have to be born again. If you are not born again, this benefits will be difficult for you to really attain. So I want to give you the opportunity to start enjoying all these benefits that we talk about by first accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, wherever you are. Or perhaps you are already born again, but due to one issue or the other, you, there is a disconnect between you and God. And you need to reconnect back to God. God is giving you the opportunity once again to come back home just like the prodigal son you know he went away after so many years he came back to his senses and he went back home and his father's arms were open and said yes my son you are welcome anytime i'm ready to accept you so that's what god is saying to those of us who have not fully given our life to christ or we have given our life to christ but we are not living to the standard that god expects us to so god is saying or reminding you or calling you again tonight to tell you that his hands are open to receive you and welcome you back home. And I pray as you do that, God Almighty will surely make your life better in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Father, I pray, Lord God Almighty, your word that has gone out will be a blessing to those that have heard it. And I pray, Lord God Almighty, that as your word is being received, Lord God Almighty, Lord, let your spirit begin to make it real in the life of everyone that have received your word in the name of Jesus. And for some of your children that have not accepted you, Lord God Almighty, I pray that you will touch their hearts and they will give their life to you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father, for Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you and I hope you all keep safe and see you next week. Thank you.
Thank you for watching our Ignite service. Remember to share this video with friends and family. Check us out on social media to learn more about our church. God bless.